Fur trappers, explorers, and traders came into the area from 1800 to 1840. During that same period, Major Stephen H. Long passed the soon-to-be site of Littleton as he explored along the South Platte River. All was relatively quiet until 1859, when the gold rush to Colorado began. The following year, Richard Sullivan Little arrived in Colorado to dig a ditch, now called the City Ditch, that would draw water from the South Platte to irrigate farms. By 1861, he was the chief engineer for the Capital Hydraulic Company. Richard Little made land claims, and then, along with his wife, Angeline, homesteaded a filing of his own in 1862. With water readily available, farms and ranches began to spring up throughout the South Platte River Valley. As young families came to the valley to settle, educating their children became a priority. In 1864, Richard Little was again at the forefront, organizing a meeting in his cabin. That meeting established the organizational structure for Littleton Public Schools. As farms flourished, community leaders saw the need for a mill. Richard Little, John Lilly, Jesse Estlack, and others built the Rough and Ready flour mill in 1867. Its success meant steady employment and the need for housing for mill workers. Unfortunately, the mill's colorful history includes burning to the ground and being rebuilt twice. In 1959, the Rough and Ready flour mill burned one last time and was never rebuilt. In 1869, a United States Post Office was designated in Littleton, and once again, Richard Little assumed his leadership role in the community and was named Postmaster. It was January of 1872 when the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad began regular train service that passed by Richard Little's farm. Now the community was connected to the rest of the world. Two years later, a depot was built, a depot that still serves today as a train station, anchoring the downtown Littleton Southwest light rail line. In 1872, Richard Little filed a plat for the village that was to bear his name. He laid out a town site, which consisted of 18 blocks with subdivisions ranging from nine to 20 lots. Churches and schools began to rise from the ground. St. Paul's Episcopal Church was built in 1872, and the first Presbyterian Church was built in 1883. J.D. Hill and I.S. Morse founded the Littleton Creamery Company in 1884. It grew to include wholesale dealing in butter, cheese, cream, and all kinds of creamery apparatus and dairy supplies. Today, it's the site of a store called a garden path. Among the Littleton settlers who found dairying to be a good business was Fred Bemis. The first Bemis dairy farm was on the site of the current Valley Feed and Lawn Supply store on Main Street. In addition, the Bemis family was well known for their cattle and horse business. The Littleton Gazette was founded in 1888 and Littleton had really come of age with the arrival of a newspaper. Today's Littleton Independent is a direct descendant of the Gazette. By 1888, 200 people lived in 30 dwelling units in Littleton. Two years later, in 1890, the population was up to 245 and citizens voted for incorporation. By the time Littleton had officially become a town, Main Street was thriving. O.G. Hill's general store at the end of Main carried a wide variety of merchandise, but there were specialty stores as well. R.W. English and Harry Nutting owned a successful lumber company, and Joel's hardware store was a popular stop. Mr. Benedict and Mr. Thompson offered their services as blacksmiths and D.L. Nestor sold boots and shoes to both town and country folk. Two pharmacies were in business. 
a barbershop, a steam laundry, restaurants, and saloons also provided much-needed services. Littleton's first fire service was created in 1890 when the John G. Lilly Hook and Ladder Company organized as an all-volunteer fire department. Littleton's first library opened in a drugstore on Main Street in 1897. And by the turn of the century, the population had grown to 738 people. Beekeeping was a popular activity among Littleton's farming families in the 1890s and early 1900s. By 1891, Harry Knight, who lived near Winnetka Road, now called Platte Canyon Road, owned a thousand colonies of bees and called his home apiary the Beehive Factory. But wheat was the most widely produced grain crop in Littleton. By the 1890s, other grains were also abundant. Alfalfa, oats, timothy, clover, hay, corn, and millet were all being grown. Not all farms in the Littleton area were large operations. Many smaller truck farms produced vegetables for market and for canning. The Pickletown area, located east of Broadway and south of Orchard Road, got its name from the large volume of cucumbers produced there. Through the early decades of the 1900s, optimism reigned on Main Street. Adolph Coors invested on Main Street in 1905, building an impressive block that included two stores, three storerooms, 14 office rooms on the second floors, and toilet rooms on both floors. The cost of construction? A monumental $16,000. By the 1920s, Main Street boasted a Ford dealership owned by Ivy W. Hunt. It also had a movie theater, Sommers Oil Company with gas pumps and grease, and a new town hall. Littleton's evolution from an agricultural community to manufacturing was about to begin. Telephone service arrived in 1902 when the first exchange was set up in Thompson's drugstore. Electricity followed a year later when Nelson Rhodes Jr. received the first franchise for electric lights. Boosting the town, encouraging its growth and development was an important task for early town governments. In 1901, when the state legislature voted to create a new county in the Denver metro area, Littleton became the temporary county seat of Arapahoe County. Immediately, Littleton's town fathers began a campaign to ensure its selection as the permanent county seat. Englewood fought back, but Littleton residents promoted their town vigorously. In 1904, Littleton was named the permanent county seat for Arapahoe County, and four years later, the $60,000 courthouse was completed on the hill at the east end of Main Street. Today, the restored beauty's legacy remains as home to the Littleton Municipal Courts. By 1910, when the population of the city reached 1,373, an electric trolley car line had been in operation down Main Street for three years. Early citizens realized the need to encourage industry to settle in Littleton. When word came in 1903 that the J. George Laner Engineering Works was considering Littleton as a site, enthusiastic businessmen organized what they called a board of trade. Generous incentives were offered as local people raised enough money to be able to sell 40 acres of land north of town to the Laner Company for a mere five cents an acre. Laner Engineering Works, which manufactured mining equipment and machinery, completed its plant construction in 1904. Harley Holmes, inventor of the front wheel drive truck, established a motor company in Littleton in 1920. The company moved to Denver briefly, but came back to Littleton in 1924 under the direction of George L. Coleman, who renamed it the Coleman Motor Corporation. 
Coleman Motors continued its very successful manufacturing operation in Littleton for many years, eventually becoming American Coleman in 1948. Among its products were front-wheel drive trucks used during World War II, fire trucks used in many communities, four-wheel drive trucks, and airport towing tractors. American Coleman operated until 1987 when it finally closed its doors. Throughout the early decades, the town council had been meeting and conducting business in rented quarters on Main Street. In 1919, the citizens expressed their faith in the town's governing body by approving a municipal bond issue for a new town hall. The cornerstone for the new structure, which like the Carnegie Library was designed by architect J.J.B. Benedict, was laid on January 30th, 1920. Today, this historically important building is home to the Town Hall Arts Center. By 1920, Littleton's population had soared all the way to 1,636 people. Six years later, buses replaced the streetcar line down Main Street. In 1931, the Red Comet Company moved to Littleton because of its central location and easy access to the railroad. Red Comet manufactured fire protection equipment that was used throughout the country and in some foreign markets. It was a mainstay until its move from the city in the 1980s. In 1939, Littleton's beautiful post office was opened at a cost of $53,000. And a year later, the population of the town had reached 2,244. The Heckathorn Company, nicknamed Hecko, manufactured screen doors in Littleton in 1939. But with the onset of World War II, the company quickly converted to wartime production. Hecko expanded with military contracts for 20 millimeter projectiles. At the end of the war, Heckathorn successfully turned its production to shock absorbers, photographic products, war medals, and ventilated seat cushions. By 1946, the post-war building boom began and the development of Bomar was underway. In 1948, former Red Comet executive Ernest Kahn Conrad began a small business producing bingo equipment next to his home on South Broadway. By 1965, he had expanded to a 20,000 square foot facility on South Jason Street and had sales of over a million dollars a year. Today, Bingo King is headquartered in Council Bluffs, Iowa, but the electronic gaming equipment is manufactured in Littleton's South Park. The city experienced a boom in industry in the 1950s beginning with the relocation of the Electron Corporation. With three divisions, foundry, machined products, and sheet metal, the company added a major plant to the community on South Rio Grande Street. But times change, and Electron filed for bankruptcy in 2001, and the company's future is uncertain. Local merchants enthusiastically greeted the grand opening of the Centennial Turf Club, just west of the Platte River, on the 4th of July, 1950. Thoroughbred racing had arrived, and businesses in town sought to capture new opportunities. The population of Littleton was now 3,370, and Main Street was the thriving heart of Littleton. Among the businesses open in 1951, with five grocery stores, four dry goods stores, two creameries, one bakery, seven cafes and taverns, four hardware stores, four gas stations, cleaners, jewelry stores, and real estate offices. However, it wasn't long before progress would bring a major threat to the vitality of Main Street as the primary shopping district in Littleton. That progress came in the form of Woodlawn Shopping Center. Located east of Main Street on Littleton Boulevard, it opened to much fanfare and excitement in 1955. 
there were plenty of free parking spaces to accommodate shoppers and a wide variety of new stores that appealed to all needs. Main Street merchants knew the times had changed. Penny's moved from its location on Main to a new, larger store in Woodlawn. Safeway was an anchor tenant. By 1956, a booming Woodlawn shopping center had added a Rexall drug store, a Woolworths, a number of clothing and shoe stores, and a movie theater. Another landmark was passed in 1955 when the Arapaho Metropolitan Recreation District was formed. Today, that district has evolved into the South Suburban Parks and Recreation District, serving Littleton and beyond. The city's first planning commission was formed in 1956. Citizens on the commission were charged with developing a master plan that would guide the physical development of the city. Two years later, the city's first comprehensive plan was introduced. The C.A. Norgren Company had been expanding in the Denver area since its beginning in the 1920s. In 1957, Norgren consolidated all of its operations to a brand new facility on South Delaware Street. Producing a broad line of compressed air products, the company continues to maintain an important presence in Littleton's industrial community. In the mid-1950s, when a major research facility was constructed on South Broadway, Littleton welcomed Ohio Oil, later renamed Marathon Oil. Once the site of a poultry farm, Marathon closed in 2001. As a prime site for redevelopment, the property could include a mix of residential and retail uses. Although the Glen Martin Company did not move into Littleton city limits when the huge guided missile plant was constructed in 1956, it had a tremendous impact on the community. The Martin Company, which became Martin Marietta in 1961 and Lockheed Martin in 1995, was already employing 5,000 people by 1957. Littleton was an obvious community choice for Martin newcomers who were looking for excellent schools and a high quality of life. The late 1950s saw a major building boom and influx of new residents. Urbanization was truly underway, and in 1959, voters approved a home rule charter and a city manager form of government that we keep today. In 1960, Littleton's Volunteer Fire Department was replaced with a staff of professional firefighters. In a controversial move that same year, local street names and numbers were changed to conform to the metro area, and the population swelled to 13,670. As Littleton's population grew and demand for library services increased, in 1963, Littleton proposed to build a new library. The City Council and the Library Board decided to name the new library the Edwin A. Bemis Library in recognition of the newspaper editor's long lifetime of service to the community. In 1965, a massive flood of the South Platte River was triggered by heavy rain south of town and $365 million in damages resulted. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers wanted to riprap the river through Littleton and beyond to prevent future flooding, but Littleton citizens sought to save the river and surrounding area as a natural floodplain. Six years after the flood, the people of Littleton voted by a margin of two to one to provide a local funding match to help the Army Corps of Engineers implement a mutually satisfactory project for flood control. The result was the Littleton Plan, which called for the development of the floodplain and also included recreation land and urban open space. Today, at 650 acres, South Platte Park is the second largest urban park in the United States, second only to New York City's Central Park. 
Littleton's vision resulted in an act of Congress that continues as a national model today. The following year, Chatfield Dam began collecting water. In 1976, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad Depot was restored. Today, it serves as the Depot Art Center, run by the Littleton Fine Arts Guild. City employees moved out of Main Street's town hall to the new Littleton Center in 1977. By then, Littleton's population had soared to 28,631 residents, and the first cable television franchise was awarded. Centennial Racetrack saw its last race in 1983. The following year, the development of Littleton's riverfront began. Today, the former Centennial Racetrack is the site of the 18-hole Centennial Golf Course and hundreds of units of contemporary multifamily housing. 1987 brought the completion of the railroad depression, and for the first time in almost 100 years, trains could move through Littleton without interrupting the flow of traffic. In addition, the right-of-way acquisitions for the depression were to pave the way for the future development of light rail from Denver. 1988 brought important connections for motorists traveling east and west. Mineral Avenue was extended across the South Platte River and Bowles Avenue was widened. Littleton's first hospital opened in 1989. Many medical offices and health-related companies also arrived to be near this renowned medical center. Today, Littleton Adventist Hospital is undergoing a major expansion which will double the size of the facility. In 1990, the city celebrated its centennial. 100 years and still going strong. The information and technology age had started years earlier, but they began in earnest in Littleton in 1994. That's when U.S. West purchased the former Gates Tire Building on Mineral Avenue. The facility is home to the Network Reliability Center which monitors the telecommunications giant's network in a 14-state region. U.S. West became Quest in the year 2000. One of the newest industries to locate in Littleton is EchoStar Communications Corporation. In 1997, EchoStar purchased and moved into the 193,000-square-foot Riverfront Festival Center at South Santa Fe Drive and Bowles. With its DISH network, Echo Star is a leading direct broadcast satellite television provider, serving more than seven million customers. A grassroots campaign over two years succeeded in the year 2000. That year, the City of Littleton, South Suburban Parks and Recreation District, the Chambers Farm Preservation Association, and the Trust for Public Lands came together to save the 28-acre Chambers Farm from residential development. The former farm, near Lowell and Bowles, will be used as an active park and as passive open space. The abandoned Arapahoe County Courthouse at the east end of Main Street was acquired by the city and lovingly restored. In the year 2000, the $3.5 million renovation of the building was completed. Today, it houses the Littleton Municipal Courts and is an important historic anchor to downtown. Light rail, which arrived in Littleton in the summer of 2000, wildly exceeded all ridership projections. In fact, ridership reached projected levels for the year 2015 within the first weeks. Littleton spent more than a half million dollars to upgrade its two stations with art, stonework, and other amenities. The city also moved the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad Station, which houses a retail shop. The year 2001 brought the much-heralded arrival of the new Aspen Grove Lifestyle Center. 
This open-air shopping center offers the finest national specialty shops and restaurants and is geared toward today's busy lifestyle. With its easy access, convenient parking, and superior architecture, which seeks to replicate Littleton's rural history, Aspen Grove has been a huge success. The era of the shopping center, soon to be the era of the shopping mall, impacted downtown shopping districts in towns and cities across the U.S. For Littleton, it meant a continuous effort to keep the heart of the town viable. Numerous plans for modernizing and beautifying Main Street have been considered and implemented in the decades since. In 1967, for example, the infamous concrete pods were erected. The Littleton Independent heralded their installation with the headline, Concrete Pods to Make Downtown a Cozy Community. Cozy gave way to controversial, as shop owners complained that the pods obscured their storefronts and some residents found them unattractive. Attempts to beautify the pods were taken in the 1970s, but they were finally removed in 1986. Despite challenges and disappointments, the community of Littleton has never given up on its main street. When plans were underway for the establishment of Arapahoe Community College, its location was selected in part because of its proximity to downtown Littleton, and Littleton City Center was constructed in the vicinity of Main Street because voters felt it was important to support the downtown district. Shoppers can choose from a glitzy lifestyle center to stores and restaurants in the National Historic District. Families can find starter homes and million dollar mansions. Bicyclists, skaters, and hikers can enjoy extensive trails and vast tracts of open space. Littleton boasts a community college and a highly respected public school district. A sophisticated light rail system whisks riders downtown to work and to play. A first class library, performing arts center, and historic museum attract thousands each year. And decades of community celebrations like Western Welcome Week and the Candlelight Walk delight families across the region. For 140 years, the effort of Littleton citizens and political leaders have led us to become the Littleton we know and love today. Our mission is to continue to preserve the past as we plan for the future. <laughs>